Today, we're tackling a huge question. Can you really save money or even succeed by building a Samsung Galaxy phone completely from spare parts bought on AliExpress? In this box lies every component required to assemble a Samsung A54 5G. I hunted for the cheapest parts possible, which, unsurprisingly, brought its own challenges. There are so many tiny components, it honestly felt like constructing a spacecraft. To complicate things further, a few pieces arrived broken, forcing me to reorder replacements. That's why everything here is already opened. We picked the Samsung A54 because refurbished units usually cost around $350, the benchmark we aim to beat. But expenses are stacking up quickly. I'll share the final total at the end. So, stick around and see if we actually pulled this off. This is the display, and here's the box it came in. It even includes the full frame, which saves us a lot of trouble during assembly. This is the board-to-board -board connector flex, which connects the subboard to the main board. Here's the back glass that came with the camera lens already attached. Everything looks safe, solid, and completely unbroken. Here's the battery, and if you watch this video all the way through, I'm sure you'll be able to build a phone yourself. The real question is, will it actually be cheaper? Let's find out and subscribe to the Chanel. Here's the charging board. You can tell it's definitely OEM because it looks used and a bit dirty. Here's the camera. Honestly, I'm not sure if it's OEM. The packaging isn't great, no stickers on top. But they did include the camera sensors and even the fingerprint sensor. If it all works, that's a big win. Now both of the speaker came with the plastic cover that's great. I really hope the total cost ends up being less than half the price of a new phone. At least we got the SIM tray in the exact same color, so that a good start. Here's the motherboard, probably the most important component of the entire build. I already checked its value and ran a boot reading test because the packaging was honestly terrible. Luckily, the readings looked good, so fingers crossed everything works. Now, let's start assembling. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more builds like this. Here's the display. And the best part is it already came with a frame attached. That's a huge time saver for this build. And look at this color, a bold yellow frame, which really makes the phone stand out. It's always nice when the parts match the original style because it keeps the final build looking premium. Now, the display is one of the most important components of the entire phone. Without a perfect display, the whole device is practically useless, so I'm handling this very carefully. Before we go any further, I need to remove all these protective stickers on the frame. This step is super important because even the smallest piece of plastic left behind could affect the fit or cause problems later during assembly. Now we're fixing everything to this frame. Here's the motherboard, fresh out of the plastic bag. This is the brain of the entire phone. Without it, nothing works. I'm checking it carefully because this tiny piece controls everything. The display, the cameras, the charging, and more. It looks good so far, so let's keep going. Here's the camera, still in the box. I'm not sure if this one actually works. Now, I'm going to fix the camera onto the motherboard and make sure it's seated properly. After connecting the camera sensors to the motherboard, the next step is to carefully fix the motherboard into the frame. This part is really important because everything needs to line up perfectly. The connectors and ports all have to fit exactly. Take your time here to avoid any damage and make sure it sits snugly before moving on. Here's the charging and control board just out of the plastic bag. This board is crucial because it handles charging, data transfer, and a lot of other functions. I'm being very careful while handling it to avoid any damage. Now, I'm gonna fix it into the frame. Make sure it aligns perfectly with the connectors and screw holes. Take your time pressing it gently into place. A misalignment here could cause serious issues later. Once it's seated correctly, we can move on to the next steps in the build. I'm fixing the battery into the frame. This part is simple, but very important. Make sure it sits properly in its slot, lines up with the connectors, and stay secure. A loose battery can cause serious problems later, so I'm pressing it gently but firmly into place. This little part might look simple, but it's one of the most important pieces in the entire build. Why? Because this cable connects the display to the motherboard, and it also 
also links the subboard to the main motherboard. Without this connection, nothing works. No display, no charging, no signal. So I'm handling it carefully and making sure it's completely clean before installing it. Now, let's fix it into place and check that each connector snaps in properly. A secure fit here is absolutely critical for the phone to function perfectly. Now I'm fixing the fingerprint sensor onto the subboard. This tiny part is crucial for security and unlocking. So it needs to be seated perfectly in its position before we move on. Here are the RF cables. Normally, one of these should be slightly shorter than 12 centimeters, but in this build, I'm using two cables that are both 12 centimeters long. They'll still work perfectly for connecting the boards. Finally, I'm connecting the battery. This is the last major connection, and once it's in place, the phone should be ready to power on. A simple step, but a very satisfying one. These are the two speakers of the phone, and they're both working fine. Speakers are important for everything, from calls to media playback, so it's great to see them in good condition. Along with the speakers, we also have the locking mechanism that keeps everything securely in place inside the frame. Without this, the internal components could shift around, which is definitely something we don't want. Now, I'm carefully positioning everything and securing it by screwing in these small screws on top. Each screw needs to be tightened just enough to hold things firmly, but not too tight to damage the parts. It's a simple step, but one that adds strength and stability to the entire build. I'm fixing the SIM tray into the frame. This is a quick step, but it's important to make sure the tray slides in smoothly and locks properly, so it lines up perfectly for future SIM card changes. Here's the back glass with the camera lenses installed, and our work here is almost complete. The phone looks amazing now. Let's plug into the charger and see what happens. Wow, it's working. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Now, I'm going to reveal the total cost of building this phone. But before that, here's the exciting part. I'm giving this phone away to the next customer who comes into my store for a phone. And that's not all. Our full video of testing this phone and the customer's reaction will be uploaded soon. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. All right, now let's finally disclose the total price we spend on this build. The motherboard was just $90 and the display only $15. That's pretty amazing for such an expensive phone. The motherboard cost $90 and the display was only $15. All the other components together came to $35. I did receive a damaged battery at first, so I'm counting that as an extra $40. So in total, building this phone cost me just $145. That's incredible considering a refurbished version of this phone sells for around $350. We saved more than $200. That's almost 60% off the price. So there you have it. Building your own phone can be surprisingly affordable if you know where to get the parts. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want more tips, repairs, and tech experiments, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.